प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी एह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी एह घनश्याम महाराज नी जय हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय Supreme Almighty, our beloved Gansham Maharaj, the path maker to our liberation, our Puja dear Guruji, Puja Santo and all the Bhakto, Jai Swami Narayan. Bhagwan Swami Narayan, when he came on this earth to attract souls, to attract those who wanted liberation. He celebrated festivals. Festivals are celebrated everywhere in mostly all religions. There is different types of festivals. There's there's festivals that are especially just for food. There's festivals that are especially for you can see even literally playing. There's festivals for almost everything and anything. And if we look outside in the world, various religions celebrate festivals to gather mass amounts of public in a certain area and to worship, enjoy, and learn about God, their God, whoever. In Bhagwan Swami Narayan's time, Bhagwan Swami Narayan, when he came and when he started his uh, holy fellowship after Sadhguru Raman Swami handed him uh, the reins, Maharaj initiated festivals so that certain elements could be put together. You know, looking from a, a, a very, very meek vision, a low vision, some people tend to uh, think that festivals are celebrated and it's just a waste of money, a waste of time, a waste of space. All these different various kinds of, you can say, opinions are thrown out because obviously if you need to uh, perform a festival, you need money and devotees provide money. But those who have a low vision, they think that it's a waste of time. But today we're actually going to go into one of Bhagwan Swami Narayan's festivals and how he celebrated it and nonetheless find out what the reasons why Bhagwan Swami Narayan started this whole, uh, you can say, uh, a scheme of celebrating festivals. The Swami Narayan Sampradaya is a holy fellowship that held grand festivals and holds grand festivals and celebrations to rejuvenate and relieve followers of the community from stress and burdens in their life. Obviously, if we look in the world, many people tend to take alternatives by drinking alcohol to relieve their stress and burden, smoking cigarettes, doing drugs. All these different alternatives are just for one sole cause, to relieve stress, depression, and burdens. Now, instead of Instead of taking that approach, Bhagwan Swami Narayan completely removed that from society and nonetheless, keeping that element of stress, tension, burden, he just diverted it by celebrating festivals. This soul does not have the capacity to directly worship God. Due to that, Bhagwan Swami Narayan had to dilute his whole mode of worship so that those in that time and even in this time get attracted to his divine form by him celebrating festivals. May it be a Rangotso or may it be a Sakotso or may it be a, a Rasotso 
or may it be an Ankot Utsa or any kind of festivals that Bhagwan did, the sole purpose behind it was so that devotees develop affection for his form. Devotees understand why Bhagwan Swaminarayan has come on this earth. And nonetheless, Bhagwan Swaminarayan celebrated it to keep everyone God centered. Now, in that time, Gujarat is, uh, we can say, fairly medium sized state. So, obviously, they didn't have transportation like right now cars or motorcycles, but they had to come by cart, bullock, uh, horses, or even walk. So, it took many, many days for them to get to the festival. Nonetheless, those who were out of state took them even months at times because there was devotees from the south, devotees from the east, devotees from the north and the middle of India. So invitations were thrown out by Bhagwan Swaminarayan and sent to all corners of India so that from at least three to four months ahead and mass planning was done at such an accuracy, with such accuracy because Bhagwan knew that if he wanted all those bhaktos to get to the festival on time, then he would have to deliver those invitations pre-handed. And those bhaktos, when they receive the invitation, they can leave upon re receiving and get there maybe in even a month. But Bhagwan Swamiran's accuracy, his planning, his organization was out of the ordinary, was so planned even in that time that we can only determine and understand that only Bhagwan can do this. But going back to the main format, these festivals provided a forum for the community to meet and appreciate each other. By the grace of Maharaj and by the inspiration of our Puja Guruji, we're going to be celebrating Sadhguru Smriti Mahotsav 3 in July 2019, as well as Panchabdi Mahotsav. And right now, preparations are going on. But from that, we can understand and perceive that there is Haribuktos from all over the United States that are coming. Nonetheless, from uh, Canada, United Kingdom, and even India. And we'll be attending this festival. Now, when everyone gets together for those seven, eight days, that environment, that atmosphere is something divine because the literal meaning of Loyadam Parivar is Loyadam is the name of our organization and Parivar is family. So this one big family is getting together to again communicate with one another, bond with one another. And by doing this, one whole year until the next uh, um, anniversary of the temple comes, everyone uh, you know gets recharged, and they remember these festivals. They remember Puja Guruji's katha, Puja Guruji uh, doing ras or dancing in front of Maharaj to please Maharaj, and from that they take even the small glimpses, and they remember it throughout their year until they meet Guruji again. And from that very purpose, their stress, relief, uh, or their stress, burdens, depression, it all vanishes. That is why Puja Guruji even holds these kinds of festivals. For those who think that it's a waste of time, only if one came and actually sat in the uh, atmosphere, at least understood the, uh, the whole uh, event, then one would appreciate it. Because even as of right now, the mayor of this town, Raritan, he has developed such a bond with uh, Puja Guruji and Santo that, and all the bhaktos here as well, that even if he is uh, from an, an, another religion, he still appreciates and enjoys the atmosphere due to Puja Guruji's inspiration of actually, um, actually, um, you know, holding these kinds of festivals. So that's why even in that time, Bhagwan Swamiran hold festivals so that you know one, uh, one, all the devotees from you know different kind, uh, different regions can appreciate one another, bond with one another, and nonetheless, it sped up Divya Bhav 
and cultivated satsang, um, which is a core element that Bhagavan Swaminarayan wanted to uh, actually initiate in that time, because it was the starting of the sampradai. Now there's four particular reasons, you can say four objectives, that Bhagavan Swaminarayan actually, um, you know, uh, focused on, and that's why he celebrated these festivals. Number one was disciples became aware that they were not alone in their devotion to Bhagwan Swaminarayan, but rather members of a vast family, irrespective of their difference in caste, religion, language, or region, were with them. Now in that time, it was a new religion. There was many, many haters due to Bhagwan Swaminarayan's very speedy rise in society. Many, many appreciated him, and many, many also hated him. But those who were followers of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, actually uh, needed this so that they can you know uh, hold on and 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 bond with one another so they can also understand they're not alone they also have to go through such kind of persecution pain to uh, you know worship Bhagwan and by sharing thoughts with one another satsang actually became stronger and Bhagwan Swaminarayan not only had you can say Gujarati devotees but had many, many different kinds. Um, Bhagwan Swaminarayan had Parsi devotees, even English devotees, many other kinds of devotees. So his divinity, his, his whole attraction of one believing that this is not an ordinary person, but this is Bhagwan was actually true in that fashion. Number two, disciples had a platform to strengthen their faith in Bhagwan Swaminarayan, meet saints and other dis disciples and learn spiritual values from one another. So meaning satsang in short, sansamagam. Number three, as it was the beginning of the Holy Fellowship, disciples were faced with problems for being a member of the Holy Fellowship. Such issues could further be discussed and solutions could be formulated. Meaning in that time, how could they surpass, uh, you know, persecution? They would discuss, they would avoid, uh, you know, those kinds of public and crowd. And it would be all planned there. And number four, festivals were training centers for mass education for giving inspiration to people to become free from addictions and worldly attachments. You know, there's many kinds of training centers. Uh, even here in the, uh, the army, there's training centers on different various kinds of skills that you have to develop as a soldier. Um, there is different training centers here if we get a local job at, um, you know, uh, Staples or even a, a fast food uh, restaurant. There's, everything needs training. But these festivals were special training for devotees so they can actually get some kind of, uh, you know, knowledge regarding, uh, you know, one should do this, one should not do this. That Vivek Drashti, that ability to discriminate, was given and developed from these festivals. So these are the main reasons why Bhagwan Swaminarayan started these festivals. And even today, until that day, till now, continuous festivals from different organizations are, are held in one year. Maybe hundreds of festivals are held. And, and through that, um, you know, devotees get their uh, share of, you can say, um, juice, if I can put it, their share of power, spiritual strength. And from there, they continue to uh, uh, walk towards uh, the path of God. Now, today we would like to uh, take a look in short of the Maharas Leela in Panchara that Bhagwan Swaminarayan celebrated. Swaminarayan Hare. Bhagwan Swaminarayan often played Ras. Ras is pretty much, um, all of you have probably seen it, a collective circular dance accompanied by Kirtans with Santo and his Bhakto and um, it's it's circular uh, circular dance, uh, sometimes with sticks, sometimes without sticks. But uh, Bhagwan Swaminarayan often, uh, you know, played this kind of a dance which was called Ras. One such unparalleled Ras festival was celebrated in the courtyard of Jinapai in Panchara on February 25th, 1823. Now, what we have to do 
a small, small task right now while listening to this charitra is go back into that time. Go back into the future. Exactly what these descriptions will narrate. Go there. Be in that place. See Maharaj. See his santo. And experience the whole leela. And from that, one will develop very, very much joy in one's heart. It was the night of a full moon, Sharad Purnima. Hundreds of saints and thousands of invited devotees across the land came to Panchara for the festival. During the evening, Maharaj was seated to take his meal. While Maharaj was having his meal, Brahman and Swami came for darshan and humbly plead, pleaded, just as Bhagwan Shri Krishna played Ras with the gopis on the night of Sharad Punam, we wish that you play Ras with us today. Now, Bhagwan Shri Krishna, when he was on this earth thousands of years ago, he often played Ras with uh, gopis. And uh, this was a Leela that was done many times. Now, Brahmanan Swami, obviously, he knew that this Leela was done, but he wanted to have the darshan of Bhagwan Swami Narayan performing this leela of Ras, playing with his santos, playing with his bhaktos. So he humbly pleaded and requested. You know, this from this one small statement, we can actually get a lot. In Bhagwan Swaminarayan's Vachnam Rut Sarangpur, second chapter, Maharaj actually gives the formula on how to behave with his ekantik satpurush in order to obtain his rajipo, a formula which is impossible to receive because in Gunatitan and Swaminivato, Swami says that one can, or in Gopan Swaminivato, Swami says that one cannot understand the kriya or the action or the intention of a sadpurush. It is very difficult. But Bhagwan Swaminarayan's daya, his compassion, in that very Vachnamurut, Bhagwan Swamiran states on how to behave with a great Sant. And here Brahmanan Swami displays the same adequates, the same behavior, and, and, and shows humbly, I mean, even in a, in a you can say, a, in an ordinary platform, if someone you knew was a king or a, or a president, let's for example, or a very great man, you would never approach him and just start talking and babbling away. You would go there very slowly. You would first look at what he's doing. And then you would observe that if he's free, then you would humbly crouch down a little to his level and humbly plea that, will you do this or is this possible? In very, very nice, simple words, with a very humble, humble intention. And due to that, that person obviously would say yes, or at least would be appalled by how humble the person uh, requested. If such ordinary people have this kind of inclination, then Bhagwan Swaminarayan and his Satpurush, just how, as how they are complex, they're actually very, very simple as well. They're complex in their spiritual level. They're complex. Bhagwan Swamiran doesn't have a spiritual level, but a Satpurush, he's complex in his spiritual level. He's complex in where we cannot understand his intention. He is complex because his great his greatness is not comprehensible to the human mind, yet. He is also simple. He is easygoing. He is straightforward. All these different kinds of qualities live inside of the Satpurush. And when we also, by following that formula in the Sarangpur second chapter, communicate with the Zekantik Satpurush, they also become pleased. But here, going back to the topic at hand, Brahman and Swami humbly, humbly, pleaded to Maharaj. And from there, if we put ourselves in that area, we can actually see the whole scenario. 
from there, Maharaj, uh, Brahman Swami requested, will you play Ras with us today? Maharaj smiled and replied, I will fulfill your wish, but only on one condition. You will have to compose and sing new kirtans during the Ras. Only then will you enjoy the Maharas. Meaning, Maharaj was like, yeah, I will give, I will give you my presence in the Ras, but you also have to give your, uh, you also have to uh, display your skills of developing kirtans instantly, and then I will only come. Brahman Swami agreed. Sri Hari said, arrange the Maharas on the open ground by the hill in the westerly direction. The river flows nearby and the light of the full moon and sweet aroma of flowers of the spring season will be ideal. Now, thinking in this position, we should also go into that scenario. Even right now, if we hear and then while going to sleep, while going to sleep, if we recall this scenario then we'll be able to also see it and Bhagwan and and his santo and bhakti will also come into our dreams if we truly by heart want to see this whole scenario after the preparations everyone headed towards the bank banks of the river by 9 p.m the large flat ground was teeming with santo and bhakti upon his arrival maharaj instructed brahman and swami to arrange the numerous sadhus in nine circles. Maharaj affirmed that everyone's presence inspired divine joy like that of Akshardham. After that, Maharaj announced for the Maharaj to commence. One of the sadhus started beating a pair of sticks on the drums followed by other various Indian instruments and Brahma and Swami commenced singing. The sadhus started taking the Ras steps in unison with the beats of the percussion instruments. Even from this, Arpuja Guruji also performs Ras. He also dances on stage to please Maharaj. And from there, if we envision and think or get a glimpse of him, then we would also attain peace. And from there, we would be able to recall Maharaj. The sadhu started taking the Ras steps in unison with the beats. When Maharaj saw his sadhus dancing in circles with devotion, he got down from the dais and waved, waved, weaved through the circles to reach the senior sadhus who were in the center. Sri Hari moved around in circles, clapping the hands of the senior sadhus. With Sri Hari's participation, the ras indeed turned into a maharas. The other sadhus, sadhus in the outer circles wished that Maharaj would play with them too. Now, why did this become a maharas? Why was this such a very, very famous and revered event, festival in Bhagwan Swaminarayan's time? This was one of the reasons. Instantly, now what was the request? The other sadhus in the outer circles wished that Maharaj would play Ras with them too. Now, let's say there was about 100 santos, 100, 200 santos. Maharaj went all the way in the middle uh, where the senior santos were, maybe a small circle of 15, 15, 20. And one by one, Maharaj clapped hands with them, and uh, and those senior santos were getting the, the happiness of Maharaj. But those who were on the outside seven circles, they were like, what about us, Maharaj? Will we, when will you come to us? When will you come outside? And that's when they thought, Maharaj, when would they play with us? Instantly, they saw Sri Hari standing before them, ready to play Ras. So Maharaj took forms. If there were 200 santos, Maharaj took 200 forms right there instantly on that spot. Maharaj had taken the same number of forms as number of sadhus present in the Ras. The Maharas commenced. Sri Ji Maharaj wished to make the Maharas, Maharas memorable for all of his sadhus. Everyone was enjoying so much that no one was aware of the time. Everyone wanted to continue, but Brahman and Swami and some senior saints did not want to tire out Maharaj. This also happens here when Puja Guruji comes. Puja Guruji, uh, to please Maharaj and the devotees, would uh, perform Ras for an extended amount of time. Now, 
due to old age, uh, you know, Puja Guruji's legs would get worn out, he would become tired. So Santos would obviously think about that and, you know, request uh, those who are handling the music to kind of dim it down and completely stop. In the same way, Brahmanan Swami and senior Santos were were concerned about if Maharaj would become tired, what will happen. So they wanted to end the Ras. So what did they do? So to conclude the Maharaj, Brahman Swami played a smart trick by gesturing a devotee to ignite a heap of dry grass at a distance. Upon doing so, everyone saw the fire and brought in. It was brought to a, a halt, meaning stop. When the Maharaj came to an end, the full moon night was on the verge of breaking in dawn. The sadhus gathered around Maharaj. Brahman Swami said, Maharaj, the night seemed as if it was six months long. Maharaj replied, Because the night wanted to prolong itself, I, allow, I allowed it to prevail. The Maharaj would not have ended tonight. In this manner, Maharaj gave bliss to his sadhus and devotees by playing in the Maharaj with them. A very, very simple, uh, small charitra of Bhagwan playing Ras with his santos. But there are so many things that we can take from this charitra. Number one, Maharaj's intention to please all of his santos. Number two, the santos desire to engage and attach oneself to Maharaj. Number three, Bhagwan Swami Narayan's whole vision to hold the Sampradaya, keep it as one by celebrating these kinds of festivals. Nonetheless, Bhagwan Swami Narayan performed these Leelas according to the Vachnamdu Gadada 1st chapter 3rd just so that if one does not remember the idol of God at the end of one's life, if one recalls an Inkantik Sant or Hari Bhagat or even such kinds of festivals as Janmashmi or Ekadasi or even these kinds of festivals as Maharas uh, or Sakotsu or so on and so forth, then again they would be able to recall Maharaj's Murti and go to Akshardham. That's why Bhagwan celebrated these festivals to stamp in the minds of those devotees that don't worry if you can't remember my form or anything, remember these festivals. Remember how I threw gulal or powder, colored powder on you. Remember how I served you prasad. Remember how I made sak so that you can partake in it. Remember how I danced in front of you. All these different kind. Remember the glimpse I gave you. Remember the smile I gave you. Remember the hand gesture I gave you. By these small notions, even if this soul can remember during the time of death, then one will attain Akshardham. So Bhagwan Swamiran's vision is compassionate. Bhagwan Swamiran's vision is very, very broad. Bhagwan Swamiran's vision is far-sighted. And Bhagwan Swamiran's vision is not comparable or not comprehend. One, it cannot be comprehended by the human mind. But we can truly understand that Bhagwan only wants us to reach his Akshardham and give us his bliss. And our initiative is just to remember these kinds of charitras and festivals so that slowly but surely we reach his Akshardham. Saying this, my humble Jai Swaminarayan.